happening with AI. Hi, everyone. Hello. Shelby <laughs> and I have been having a very interesting discussion about uh, a golden demon piece. Yes. Uh, before the stream. Hello, everyone. So welcome. How are you all doing today? Uh, let's see. Who we got here? We got Hoosiers, Law Dog, Tim. What's going on? Donald Pipkin. Dragonfire. Jen will be Hello. in here shortly, too. Jen will to be here over. shortly. Excellent. I think I hear her. Jen right now. <gasps> there she yeah. is. So, goodbye, everybody. It was great <laughs> seeing you briefly. <laughs> Bye, Shelby. <laughs> we got Jen back. Yeah. Red to vomit, game delay. Night Elf Mohawk, hello. Swap it out. Making a mess. Ma ma making a mess. Awesome problems. <clears throat> hello. How was your very interesting uh, mod pizza? Why was it very interesting? I, I no, I, in a good way. I was like, I, I I got your order and I was like, huh, I can see how that could be good. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> That's what I. It's like my standard order at mod. Jen has a very interesting pizza that she orders. I, it's not weird. It's, it's not weird at all. Well, maybe it's a little weird. I mean, so okay, so my <clears throat> mod pizza order is I get the, the mega dough because that's the far superior crust. I would probably agree. It it's, tends to be too much food for me. It does make it heavy. Like a yeah. regular standard mod, I can eat the whole thing. Right, right. I this cannot way, I eat half mega. Yeah. and save half for later. Um, and then I get extra sauce because they never put enough sauce on. I agree with that also. Mushrooms, black olives, mm -hmm. pineapple, hot honey drizzle. See, I think the interesting thing for me is like, it does is the honey, hot honey drizzle like actually sweet? I mean, so have then, you ever put hot honey on pizza? No. Oh, you need to do this. Okay, I'll try it. I have to admit, it's something I made fun of her for, yep. and it's really good. He had it. Yeah, you yep. know, it's, he I, had it, it in Minnesota, and he came back and was like, I was making a comment about how how interesting I thought her pizza order was because yep. I'd never actually seen it before. Yeah. And I, I mean, was like, yeah. ooh, that could See, be really Tushman, good. Hot honey on pizza is dope. It's like it was made for pizza. Interesting. I mean, it, I think it was probably made for, like, fried chicken. Probably. Which is also delicious. I, it would probably be really good on fried I chicken, too. I think it was, too. like, fried really chicken. Really good on fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, fried chicken. <laughs> um, but I think, like, that makes the pineapple work more because it's yeah. sweet with sweet, mm -hmm. but also, like, kind of spicy, savory. Yeah. But I will say you know. that they didn't, the, the hot honey is a newer option at mm -hmm. Mod. They didn't have that um, when I first discovered mod. Right. Um, yeah, because you used to do a, pe a pesto, pesto drizzle. Yeah. Mm, that'd also be pretty Which good. Which was good. And again, with the pineapple. pineapple. Interesting. Yeah. She's weird. Yeah that that one <laughs> that one veers away from being as exciting it's, for it's me. It's actually really good. Okay. You gotta okay. stop making fun it's... of Jen, Jason. First the reading glasses, now pizza. She knows what she's doing. Uh okay. I would not say that we're All right, making so, fun of so Okay, wait, 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 wait. We highlight some really interesting points of convergence for me and Jen. There are an equal number where she's just wrong. Oh. Sour cream being one of them. I disagree with that one. Well, I love sour cream. It's a good I'm thing right you don't have a voice here either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hot honey like Nashville hot. So it's like it's it's called Mike's Hot Honey. It's a branded product. Um, oh, it is worldwide. Yeah, well, oh. maybe not worldwide, but it's cool. widely available. Yeah, um, you can buy it in a grocery store. Yes, game delay. Amazon. Cannons in the front yard. Dinosaurs yes. in the front yard. Dinosaurs <laughs> with cannons in the front yard. Dinosaurs with cannons. There will in be the front none. Yard. Um, but yeah, it's called Mike's Hot Honey, and it's just like honey with chili in it. I think. Hey, Alaric. Good to see you, man. Very, okay. very good. Glad you stopped by the booth. It was good to talk. Yeah. I Tim makes his make own it. hot honey. Like, you have bees, Tim? So I saw a thing today that I had to Google to make sure it was true, because I thought it was a fake internet thing. Speaking of honey. Okay. There was a, 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 a it was a, a deal that I saw, uh -huh. and, there, and I tracked it down, and there are some articles that I found, and there are some beekeepers that were noticing that they, the honey was colors. They had honey coming from the honeycombs that was like blues and greens and things like that. And they started wondering why. And there were there was like an M and M plant, like a Mars, M and M Mars plant that had syrupy stuff that the honeys were going and getting. And it had food coloring in it. 
because of the products they made. And there was another article about a plant that was close to a Red Bull facility in Europe where it was creating red honey because of contamination in the, you know, in the, the whatever water the they were Bull's drinking or whatever they were involved with that had runoff of, of like Red Bull and stuff. So the Red Bull's not red. Huh? Red Bull's not red. No, but the ingredient in it was causing it to turn red. Weird. In the honey. Like an orangish. Wow. They showed it, you know, and it was not the, you know, the, the like uh, amber yellowish color. amber color yeah. that honey yeah. was. Very That's interesting. I would love to see blue honey. It was blue. That sounds really neat. Oh. Rob, this is U- U- Usharan? Usharan? Ursh- Usharan? 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 This is... Like not quite dead boy, dead boy. I don't know. He's pretty dead. Usheron. He's pretty. They're pretty... like ghouls. Well, I don't think they're technically man dead. After That's fair. <laughs> he looks pretty dead though. Yeah, I'm not real sure. I think that this is what happens when you're like cannibalistic for too long. I think he's got <laughs> two feet and an arm and a half firmly planted in the grave. Yeah, and yesterday we were working on the uh, the mace. His toenails. Do you need the pedicure? He needs a whole lot more than just a pedicure. Pedicure is a good first step. Yeah, yeah. Not wrong. He you probably feel, needs. You feel like a new person after you've had your feet rubbed for a little while. He probably needs a good solid um, trip to the dermatologist as well. <laughs> I mean, um, not 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 wrong either. Yeah, yeah I, I think like that's, that's probably, probably the first step you go. Not maybe wrong. maybe a nutritionist. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a skin condition. <laughs> Usheron. Maybe some sh- lotion. I believe nails and hair game delay. If if legend is true, nails and hair keep growing after you die. Yes. That's really odd. Yeah. I live my whole life not That's knowing weird. that. Yeah. You guys didn't know this? <laughs> I did not. I thought know this that. was like a commonly known fact. Mm, nope. I feel like That's I've heard about the nails legend, and the hair if thing. If legend is accurate. Or if if, if legend, legend is, is accurate. Source, what's I going on? It, but... Ghoul man, the man of ghouls. Yes, it is ghoul man, man of ghouls, king of ghouls. Ooh, chiropractor probably be good, yeah. <laughs> the king of the ghouls. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a stoop there. Little, oh, yeah, a little bit of osteoporosis over. going on. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. He's a little, a little old. This is like Grandfather Smeagol. Grandfather Smeagol. <laughs> Archduke Smeagol. I think my, eh, maybe not, maybe there's a little life left here. I'm so frugal. I want to know. You want to know how frugal I am? Here is my, here is my napkin that I wipe my paintbrushes on, right? And this side was used for dry brushing, so there's no more absorbency here. And this side's been used for so long it doesn't absorb anymore. So turn it inside out. <laughs> yep. And now I'm using this side. And this feels like maybe it'll work for a little bit. That's. That's me. That's dealing with me in a nutshell right there. Dealing with me in a nutshell. That type of frugal behavior is why Jason does not have a Porsche Panamera. Hey, Dad. Can we get no? (laughs) Can we get no? No. We have it at home. You have it at home. (laughs) You have Panamera at home. It goes to the Panamera. It's like a wagon. (laughs) All right. Time time to do the the cape. We're going to finish the cape today. Bust the plan. Yeah, make it look like that. Hey, it looker said I fold in eights fuse. Get on my level. So we're gonna need. You did what? He folds in eights. What does that even mean? What are we talking about? That I think that he can get more use out of it. Maybe. I don't know. Get on your just level. Fold in eights. Do you even know how to napkin, bro? Do you even napkin, bro? I napkin pretty hard. <laughs> I napkin hard. I, hap- I happen to napkin pretty hard. Thank you. Teach me concrete is all in your mind. <clears throat> you can prevail. We have faith. Positive self-talk. I am healthy. I did that already once this year. I'm not doing it again. Source says, why I know don't eat the paint merch or apparel in the store. I need a shirt and a hoodie. Because so Gabe. get yourself a, a t-shirt, a Gabe. white t-shirt and a Sharpie. Oh, no. Because Gabe. There you go. Custom apparel. You can say anything you want. I blame Gabe. Poor Gabe. I, I know. I feel bad for Gabe. So this is like, can I get this cool thing? 
No. Why not, Abe? All Gabe's fault. Corvus Thorax said frugality is nothing to be sniffed at. I have a blue shop towel I use for dry brushing and water wicking that's lasted for almost a year. See, now that's smart. Shop towels have got ultra absorbency. Though. We love you, Gabe. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Sora said Gabe put it on the whiteboard. It's already on the whiteboard, I think. Probably is on the whiteboard. You In got fact, a couple I think stickers. he has a... Hey, there's, you, you, there's stickers available that are Donate the Paint. That's huge. That's progress. That's progress. That shows that action has been taken. I don't think Gabe's paying any attention. He wasn't in there when I went in there. He would have said something, I know. Gabe's not even watching. I'm sure Christopher will keep him updated. Gabe's not even paying attention to me. You use paper towels to death? Yeah. <laughs> you also own a 3D printer. You're frugal in all the wrong ways. What's wrong with owning a 3D printer? I think owning the 3D printer is more frugal than buying all of the 3D prints. Accurate. Is it, though? With how cheap they are these days? Yeah, probably. They are very cost-effective now. Three D printer means unlimited power, and you create even more walls of unpainted minis. Except most people don't, right? Don't they just buy the files and yes. print them? Yes. Yes. The amount of people I know yeah. who have got terabytes and terabytes and no three D printer yeah. are insane. Yeah. One day. Absolutely insane. Wait, people buy prints and then don't have a 3D printer? Oh, I know tons of people oh, that yeah, sub. All the people on like Patreons and stuff. To Patreons and don't know, have they're anything. They're like, oh, it's only $10 and I get 2,000 models a month. Do we, do we not Virtual do walls of shame. USB of shame, yes. <laughs> yeah, nobody look at that external hard drive, please. Schmidt said, I just realized Jason cheats more. He has monument hoodies in not black colors. It's true, he's the only one. It doesn't I have to be. I, the and only I one. think it should be that way. Because none of you would have monument hoodies if Jason didn't have monument hoodies. I mean, that's probably true. I'm a mini painter and a mini printer and a mini collector. These are different hobbies. That's true. <laughs> These are different That's hobbies. Very true. <laughs> we have monument hoodies at home. He did bring his own hoodies. Using one of the new colors here, caramel brown, over the dark orange brown. Nice one two stage to kind of kill some of that really orangey warmth. Get a nice little highlight. And then we're going to go. What did, I, what did I do next here? I did. Maybe. Have I put a little bit of yellow in there? Let's find out. This might look a little weird, folks. Oh. Paint on my hand. Game Delay went from watching Aquatish Pan to paint with paints I can't have this morning to watching you paint with paints I can't have now. Well, he's about right. Someday. For right now, that seems about right. <laughs> Nick said, I was going to get a Monument hoodie until I found out that they don't secure pee bottles very well. Right? <laughs> yeah, Jason knows all about that. He can tell you the story. It was water. <laughs> mm, are you sure you didn't pee yourself? It was water. Looked and sounded an awful lot like you peed yourself. 
that was freak. You didn't see it. <clears throat> Only that one guy. <laughs> when I said, I think I just pissed myself. He laughed. He did laugh at me. <laughs> it was not. It was water. Would he have laughed if you were lying? Yes. Are you sure? That guy was no better than people on the internet. He didn't come to my aid. I mean... He didn't ask you... any clarifying questions. Would you have come to somebody's aid if they said, I just pissed myself? <laughs> I'm going to be honest, but I would be like, that sucks. You're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> I cannot help you with your plight. Oh, paint liquor. That's actually really smart. <clears throat> paint liquor said the trick is just to not watch them paint. I just listen and imagine they're using mahogany. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, you're talking about this whole watching thing. <laughs> it came to like, it was water. Hashtag water bottle. Hashtag I stand with Jason. Hashtag but not right by him when he pees. <laughs> yep. But not <laughs> You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Ryan Wallace on YouTube. Me. Oh, Monument Streaming. What's going on over there? Immediately hears about hoodie pee. Not the a hoodie thing. pee. <laughs> nice. I like it, folks. Got to go back and watch yesterday's stream to get the full effect of this. If you're interested in hoodie pee. <laughs> I have to admit that I was like, I was working. I had the stream on. I was working. And I, I heard you talking. And, and the gist of it is... What I got is that you were peeing and then things seemed fine. And then all of a sudden the back of your hand got wet. Yeah. But you didn't understand how. Right. And you said, I think I just I started freaking out. Myself. I started freaking out and like something realized... was going, something in my, in my, in my plumbing was going completely wrong, <laughs> you know, and I had no idea what it was because everything seemed fine. I pay attention when I pee. So it wasn't like it was out of control. I didn't see anything. <laughs> From a guy's standpoint, it wasn't forked or anything. But what, what? It was your water bottle? The water bottle I had shoved in my hoodie pocket before oh. I went to the bathroom because I was walking around the airport with my bag over my shoulder and my water in my other hand. Gotcha. And then I was like, oh, I should use the bathroom before so I get on the plane. Sideways. So I just shoved it in so sideways loud. in my pocket, swung my bag across my back, and gotcha. did the urinal gotcha. business. And all of a sudden, my hand was getting all wet in the wrong... Well, there's not a good place to have yeah. your hand get wet when you're peeing. <laughs> but it was, like, abusively wet. And I was like, oh, my God! So I pull away from the, the deal after I zipped up and everything. I turn around and go, I think I just pissed myself. And there's a guy at the at the sink <laughs> laughing. You know, I was talking to myself, not him. And he started laughing and left. And uh, I washed my hands real quick. And, and then I looked down. And there's a big wet spot on the front of my hoodie. And I'm like, oh, no! How does this happen? I'm so embarrassed. So I go over... And I, I pull the bottle out because I was going to take the hoodie and put it underneath the hand dryer thing. So I go and I reach in to pull the bottle out and immediately knew because the bottle was <laughs> leaking out around the cap. So I pull the bottle out and I go, God, twist the cap closed. And there you go. <laughs> Everything's fine now. I think that happened. I thought you were my friends and I could share these things with you. And now you're just making fun of me. I mean, yes. <laughs> but only because we're your friends. Shy Venger said, good afternoon. Felt a little silly this morning as I was watching reviews of the new sets available at the show, and all I bought was a bottle of Noosh and some Uncle Adam's brushes. <laughs> Guess I was I a saw your post. <laughs> I saw you your post, and you were like, like, I got so captivated talking to Jason, I forgot oh, no. there might be things there. <laughs> well, you'll get them, be able to get them soon. I'm sorry, three drops of this orange red in there. I, we'll do like kind of a four ish. We'll wipe the bottle in there, too. What are you using this for? A perforated bladder. Uh, to... it's I was like, I, my brain immediately goes into problem solving mode, and I was like, there is no way this just happened to me. <laughs> and of course, it was the bottle. Is this for tinting the gold? Yeah, this is for tinting the gold. Nice Hewing the gold. Hewing. We're going to hue shift the gold. Mystery witness is always awkward. Especially in the bathroom. You, you don't really want mystery wetness in the bathroom. It's, it's always a little weird everywhere, but especially when you're in the bathroom, you're like, I should know where this is coming from. I feel like if there's one place in life you need to know where it's coming from, it's in the bathroom. Well, and, and That looks about right to me. That's pretty good opacity. I think I, I can work with that. I've been there with the coffee where you drink and like, okay, the lid's not on maybe and it drips. And then, and then as a woman, you're like looking down. And... <laughs> <laughs> Like, am I okay? What? Yeah. <laughs> then you have a like brown stain right down the middle. I love coffee. I hate it when it spills. That silly coffee. Why is it spilling? Right. It has no Cold business doing lip. that. Solway Studios. Hello. 
Whoa. Going on, Zoe. Good to see you. One tomato. Jason had two kinds of wetness in his hoodie. <laughs> well, I think it was only one. I, I hope it was only one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've determined that it was only one. I think we were just talking about the fact that it was, in fact, only one. <laughs> Necronomatron painting mystery wetness. I couldn't have popped in at a more awkward time. Perfect timing. Yeah, if you're a frequent watcher of the stream, this is like the timing yeah. that you want. <laughs> like, ah, oh, this is normal. Also, it is normal, yeah. <laughs> when Jordan first got hired, he's like, oh, this is where all the magic happens. This is where we teach people how to paint. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wait a we minute. We don't do that here. We do pee pee poo poo jokes. And then I immediately said, I'll fit in just fine. You'll fit in just fine. <laughs> Turns out, I, too, am a heathen who enjoys pee-pee-poo-poo -poo jokes. <laughs> Ryan Wallace said, If I accidentally spill something on my pants that looks questionable, I just assertively stare at people as I pass. Makes them uncomfortable. <laughs> What's up, Little Goblin? Little Goblin came, in right, came right in on pee-pee-poo-poo -poo jokes. Perfect Best time timing. to join the stream. <laughs> Free Radio Armageddon, hello. At least he wasn't <laughs> streaming while he was streaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what that, you that's did not there. Allowed. That was clever. I see what you did there. See the magic of the red? The orange red's a good color for this, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Soulway Studio said, doing good, thank you. Paintings are looking great. Is it okay if I do an FAO to you, Jason, via the monument contact email? I, I don't know what FAO means. What does that all mean? You can contact me anytime, baby. I'm thinking it's just sending a message to you, but to the support. Yeah. Yes. The contact form on our website, absolutely. I will make sure. Or my email is jason at monumenthobbies.com, so you can too. send it to me direct if you want. I don't mind. <laughs> to be fair, doing that will make people uncomfortable, even with clean pants. That's true. But it just is the added bonus. Is that here? We have a witty sighting? We oh. do have a witty sighting. Witty said I was summoned. Ha ha. Summoned? Was summoned by the, by the pee-pee poo-poo jokes? Oh, by the pee-pee poo-poo <laughs> jokes? <laughs> and when I do these uh, glazes and washes, <clears throat> take most of the material off of your brush on a surface. I use my thumb palette so that when you go over to the model, you're not putting tons and tons of material down. You don't want a big droplet that you're having to move around. You want each brush stroke to give a very similar amount of coloration. And if you have that huge droplet or amount of wetness on your brush, you're getting a very inconsistent amount of uh, wetness delivered onto the model, which equates to coverage and pigment. So take it off mostly on another surface. Yes, you'll have less pain. It's a little wasteful. At the end of the day, you will be pleasantly surprised with the fact it makes everything look that much better. Chuck, yeah, we were we were never off it. You know, you've been here long enough. Uh, we have Jim Crimmins saying, welcome home, Monument Crew. So new paints Monument. online when? Thank and, you, thank you. End of April, beginning of May. It's yep. funny because you say welcome home and we're going to be gone tomorrow. They're leaving again. Yeah. No stream. Oh no, no stream with these two tomorrow. No we're, sleep till Anaheim. Guests. Thought we were going to Brooklyn. No, we're going to Anaheim. Hmm. Never once did I say Brooklyn. You alluded to. I mean, Brooklyn. you basically did that one at the end of last year. Yes, that was New York Comic Con. That's true. This is not that. <laughs> this no, is you know what? Which is weird because, like, yeah, Sunday is Easter. What? It, wh how long does this event go? Does it end on Sunday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's still happening on Sunday. Oh yeah. And they expect people to be there. I would assume so. Okay. I mean, I assume that there probably will be, and maybe that's maybe maybe that is a weekend that works well for them because people are traveling. Or something? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'll be here. So there's that. And then I think tomorrow is Philip and Matt. But I'm not Philip sure if anyone has asked Matt. 
Matt doesn't know yet, but he'll Matt be. He doesn't know, but he's streaming this. tomorrow. So, Matt, if you're watching, would you like to paint on stream tomorrow? <laughs> Uh, the correction. The correct question is, what do you stream? On, what do you paint yeah, on stream what are you tomorrow? Painting on stream tomorrow is the better question. Uh, seriously though, Shelby, uh, Gabe, Philip, Christopher, if anyone's out there, can can someone ask Matt if he wants to be on stream tomorrow? Yeah, we should probably do that because <laughs> we talked about it, but then I forgot. Solway said, "Really like how that red's bringing out the mace." Thank you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I want something that's a little more coppery than gold, but I painted it up with kind of a very orangey gold to start. And I think it gives a really good look. This is just our new orange-red glazed, very thin over the top of all of the gold work up, and then I can do some verdigris over this, right? Because it's going to play and give it like a neat kind of, you know, dirty penny or polished penny feel to it. Just with one glaze. You know, that's one layer of glaze over it. And that's just the red-orange, probably about, I don't know, 10 to 1. Glaze wash medium. No water. Just glaze wash medium and paint. And then water on the brush as needed. We'll let that dry for a minute. See if I like it still. But I think it's good. Now it really separates it from the gold uh, jewelry that he's wearing, too. So I can continue to do the, the gold for other bangles and baubles and have those metals appear very different, which is good. Because I've got in this one little area, I've got the, the steel plate, the copper mace, and the gold bangles, right? So that uh, helps me be able to use lots of different metals in one location as long as I tweak their coloration. <clears throat> Matt um, brings his Evo bag and paints in the morning before work starts. Yeah, it's awesome. He's at lunch sometimes if he's not playing a game or anything with anyone. And yeah, but uh, we can we can tell him that that people would like to see the paint or the horse that he painted when he was here last time. Oh, was he painting one of his uh, his? Uh... Yeah, he's painting the free good cavalier yeah, 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 yeah. hero guy from Age of, Age of Sigma, right? Yep. Yeah. Very cool. He's been killing it with all those models. Doing a absolute yeah, copper can be rough, job. right? It, it depends on how you pull it out. You know, this is going to be neat because I'm going to be able to get the copper reflection in the gold and the steel as I get those dialed in, which I think will be really cool. As a matter of fact, we can do some of that on the steel, right? We might be able to do some of that on the gold, too. We might be at the right spot. Let's play with it and see. Let's play with it and see. Meanwhile, I am glazing with a mixture of the bright yellow ochre and uh, caramel brown. To bring up the highlights on this cloak. Slowly, slowly bringing it out a little bit brighter. Uh, what do you guys do for true metallic steel? Dark silver, silver, anything else? Um, I mean, you can do all sorts of stuff. You could do, you know, dark silver, silver, a wash, and then do silver again, uh, which is great for like a really simple true metallic steel. Um, if I'm going a little bit more in depth, I typically like to include some um, non-metallic colors in there for the deep shadows. Um, to get some some color in there or potentially mix in some transparent paints to get a little bit of reflected color uh, from the environment using your transparent browns and your transparent greens and blues to replicate you know the the sky above or the um, the earth below actually do I have that one here I do And see how I did some of that on this model. Where you have the, the nice cooler highlights here and the warm shadows underneath. It's a cool way to, to mess around with doing true metallic metals. Uh, one. One eight seven 
Do you have any tips for using the ivory paints? If I use it right from the bottle, I struggle with brush strokes and texture, but if I thin it with water, it loses opacity and sometimes separates. Are you looking for opacity or are you looking for smoothness? Okay, hold on. Are you looking for smoothness and trans... Like, hold on, let me just read this real quick. Uh, use it right from the bottle. First question I would ask is, what are you putting it over? Yes. What are you trying to paint ivory over? A darker color? Like black? Or are you building up to ivory from something else? Because ivory, treat it like white. You never paint it over the top of a darker color directly. You always build up to it. Because it's always going to struggle, just like white does. It'll constantly struggle with trying to build it up over something else. If you're not careful. So start with like light umber, dark umber, you know, browns if you want it in browns. You can build up to ivory out of greens if you want, grays if you like. But build up through like darks and mid-tones of a base color. You know, we make a dark ivory even that you can use. That'll help a ton. Bringing some of that reflective color onto the shoulder plate there. Just doing a steady build up. I'm only using this glaze color, by the way, nothing else. Negative CHA said it was nice meeting you guys at Adepticon. The drive back to Tucson was awful. Oh. I had to go through a blizzard. That was new for me. Oh no. <laughs> Does not sound. Based on the night when you're driving home from LVO, hit a blizzard. That was what? crazy. Yeah, driving <laughs> home from Vegas. Really, and it, was, it wasn't really a blizzard. Yeah, a snowstorm that we had snow, to like nearly pull off to the side of the road. It's horrible. Sure. Wow. <laughs> Ghost Hunter's having a full on conversation with Matt on Discord about painting on stream tomorrow. <laughs> Who? Ghost Hunter is? Yeah. <laughs> he said, I just, I just messaged matt on discord about stream tomorrow <laughs> and then he's like matt has five projects he could bring tomorrow and then now matt is excited to paint on stream tomorrow <laughs> that's awesome well glad glad to hear that he's excited to be here <laughs> the negative CHA, cha glad that you made it home safely yes indeed jason and i drove to adepticon one year Yikes. Sounds like a long it drive. It wasn't horrible. It's a long drive, but it's, it's not. Drive. It's it's doable. Yeah. It's like 20-something hour, 22 hours cool. from Phoenix. Obviously, it's better if you've got someone with you. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's like my drive from, uh, from Seattle here almost. Yeah. So we're going to get into the level of brightness here where I want to start putting a little bit of texture into the into the highlight on the cloak <clears throat> with my brighter colors. And then I want to start applying some shadows, mixing in some dark plum like I did back here on this part of the hood, which I really like. Jordan uh, Paint Looker said that you're making him want to watch Dune Part 2 again. That's the whole idea! Because <laughs> I want to watch the movie again really bad. <laughs> so I'm taking out my frustrations on this guy in a very positive way. Mix in my glaze with a little bit of the other yellows and stuff that I've been using so I can get some of the brighter reflective 
coppery colors in here. Negative said yes, it was a ton of fun. It was 26 hours. Definitely going back next year. I can't imagine that it would, you know, between the time spent driving and the cost of gas, you can probably fly for around the same price, I would think. Depending on how much stuff you're taking. Oh, that's true, yeah. Taking a lot of stuff. Oh, Daniel Salucci said, shout, shout out to your excellent video on skin tones. It felt like seeing the Matrix. I found a sepia filter at the end removes the pink from a lot of the flesh paints and creates a nice Mediterranean skin tone. Awesome. Game delay said, if this is how Jordan takes out his frustrations, I feel like I need to antagonize him somehow. I mean, I am a pretty positive and optimistic person. It really is. Here come the lies. If you haven't figured that out by now. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out by now. Here come the lies. It's all real, too. <laughs> Jen, it's all real. Like he's like this all the time. <laughs> oh no, Jordan, don't express your anger by painting something cool. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's the worst. It's horrifying. You all thought I could do no wrong. Instead, I do. I make two wrongs into a right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yep. Uh, source, who's your question for? I'm not sure. I, source said, are you brush painting OSL reflection? Um, it's not really OSL reflection, right? It's just the reflection of the light bouncing off of the copper into the silver. Yeah, it's just a reflection right. of color onto another polished surface. Or mm -hmm. a, you know, slightly reflective surface. So no, not, uh, not OSL particularly, right? Because it's not a source style lighting that I'm doing. But yes, just brush painting on so that you have. Oh, that was Richie's. Uh, Tim, you can always ask questions or ask for advice. You know this. Tim said, I miss Therapy Thursday. I really could use advice on the skin tone I'm repainting. Ask away. Yeah, and Daniel, ask. I'm getting the colors ready for you so I can show you. So what I did, I did an underpainting with dark plum, red oxide, uh, and I think I used yellow ochre. And then I went over all three of these because I wanted it to be in a really warm environment, AKA the desert. Uh, the dark plum basically takes the place of all the cool colors in the, in the skin tones and then, you know, rosiness from warmth in the middle and then the yellow ochre to kind of balance out from the sun. Uh, and then over that, I glazed Shadow Flush. And that's why it keeps this really nice, warm tone to the skin. Um, in some areas, I went through and added a, a few glazes of orange oxide. Like right here on the, on the hand. Um, and then I highlighted it up with Bright Shadow Flush. Oh my gosh, that hand looks really good. Thank you. Great, right? Uh, yeah. Baby J knows how to paint. Bright well, Shadow Flush. I know flush. that, but like sometimes, it... <laughs> or sometimes I'm still even amazed. It jumps out at you. Yeah. Dark, warm, and warm. Like flesh on this so guy real. is really good. That arm is really good. It's a really easy to paint arm, which it sounds really silly. Too. But it is a really easy to paint arm. It's got like all of the right things exposed. Like you get a little bit of the the like the thumb pad. Uh, you get like the the back part of the hand, and then you get all the 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 fingers and stuff. And then you get a little bit of the the forearm. It looks really good. Does that guy have like crazy blue eyes? He does. Okay. Like I kind of see those peeking out under there. He's a Fremen. Except not a Fremen. He's not a Fremen. What? But he is. He's a Fremen. 
from Doom. Oh. Except he's not. Because we're not stealing the IP right. or anything. <laughs> I get that part. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but I get it. Uh, their, their eyes turn blue after they consume spice for a period of time. After they what? Consume spice for a period of time. The spice melange. Just doing things. <laughs> Legally distinct desert warrior. Thank you, Game Delay. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a legally distinct desert warrior. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm not sure Dune promotes drug use. There just is a lot of drug use. They're not actively discouraging it. In... Dude. The message is not don't do drugs. Similar but legally distinct from <laughs> it. No, that doesn't work. Throwing oblivion, that's word. not where we want to go with that. <laughs> I liked legally distinct as her warrior. <laughs> that one I'm I yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> legally distinct desert warrior. <laughs> it was written in the sixties. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Negative said I grabbed a couple of the texture series to teach my girlfriend to paint. Skelly got her all excited after we met up, and now she wants to paint. Nice. Sometimes that's all it takes. Meet one fun person that you click with. Awesome. I'm going to be honest. These texture trainers, I'm really starting to fall in love with. They're great, they're, right? They're just, you know, there's something about the the way you can hold them and paint them that feels really nice. Yep. Um, just because of how the the coin sits on something flat that's easy to look at. Yep. Um, and they've got a lot of character too. I mean, the one that uh, that Mashik Flamon was was painting up at uh, the show was awesome. I left that on your desk, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. I saw it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Wallace said the message is do enough drugs to become a space traveling worm psychic. Jade said my mom thought Chuck was getting me addicted to drugs when she heard I watched Dune. The Steam version. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's not a terrible that version. Chuck is a bad influence. It's not a terrible version. <laughs> Considering how old it is, it's not a horrible version of that movie. Or that book. It is a little weird. But it is also a David Lynch film. So. <laughs> that guy's the worst. That Chuck. Bacon, delicious bread, sending it to people. Oh, that was delicious, by the way. Thank you for that. I appreciate you having my back when it comes to the bread. You hear that, Shelby? Alright, so we're gonna let's see here. Let me pull out some colors here that I could potentially use. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of dark ivory here. I want something a little bit more desaturated. Oh. But still warm. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of this bright yellow ochre. Corvette, the Corvus Thorax that I know a guy from Florida who thinks he's a space traveling warm psychic. Bath salts do wonders. Oh. Jay said the day I graduated, it was on TV. I posted a quote on Facebook. Friends added quotes. Somehow my mom saw, called me up crying, saying I was throwing my life away. <laughs> She'd gone on Wiki, looked up Spice, freaked out, not paying attention that it's a book slash movie. Some people would rather do drugs than use a computer. Bad things happen. That's Dune summarized. Yes. <laughs> also true. We have no computers here. So I'm using a lot of lines here to create texture. To kind of give the fabric a little bit of life and feel and there we have reflection in steel
following the the weave down here on the next point of brightness over the shoulder trying to can keep all of the the texture lines consistent as best that I can I'm going to make sure that I go a little bit brighter on the head than the rest of the parts of this cloak. Because it's at the top of the model. What's the status of Percival's body pile? I think they're still dead. <laughs> I think they're still dead. Ghost Hunter said, why is Jason so much further along on his Golden Demon entry than Jordan? Is Jordan a slacker? Yes. Yep, I'm super duper slacking. In true me fashion. You know me. Don't get don't get started on things until it's way too late. Jason's being very proactive with his Golden Demon entry. Uh, Sugar Rush, I think the plan is that they'll be released at the same time as the paint. The end of April, beginning of May. The second one? Yeah. 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 He's painting the box art one right now. So as soon as uh, Jordan gets finished there, uh, Gabe will take care of the labels, and then we'll get them all boxed up. We have quite a few produced, I think. Uh, I have uh, like 10 approved sitting on my desk right now. Not counting any more that have been approved already or awaiting approval so we're we're making good headway Avenger wants to know if you've ever found a gaming use for Percival were you ever looking I mean didn't you say something about if you were to do like an RPG or something it would be oh, a, your yeah, yeah. yeah if I were going to do like a D&D &D campaign or something that would definitely be my character we already had like the whole thing figured out on how Percival's personality worked and Make sure you finish your Golden Demon entry at least nine months before GW publishes the rules. No. <laughs> no. That feels like a problem. Uh, Golden Demon was last week. It was last week. <laughs> Ryan Wallace said, I'm a procrastinator on writing papers because I've trained myself to believe I write better under pressure. <laughs> this week feels so odd. Jim Crimmins, thank you. I started with GW, moved to Vallejo now, pretty much only use Pro Curl, still dig the Vallejo Air Metallic and AP Air for Airbrush. The Pro Curl has taken the driver's seat for everyday painting. Nice, thank you. Love to hear. Glad to be your daily driver. Ranger172 is looking forward to Ultramarine and Satin Black. And Satin Black's really good. It is really good. Not lying there. Got to print more of my paint storage solution since we came home, came home with 30 more bottles of paint, too. Jeez. Yeah. Really want to get one of those, was it FDM printers? FDM? Yeah. And some cool terrain and stuff. They're not toxic, really, so I don't have to worry about running it in my apartment. Unlike the other kind where you have to have them <laughs> far away from everything. I know said satin black is what happens to me when I spill paint on my chair. Satin black. 
The Avenger wasn't looking to add any paints <clears throat> until I saw the Rogue Hobby set. So bright. Yeah, exactly. It's very much Louise's set. So good. Like, I knew that we were going to do bright colors because I knew that Louise f tends to favor really bright and bold, saturated colors. And then I saw the set and I was like, oh, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, Sapo said, Baby J, what was the technique you used to do the clone trooper short? Basic the layering clone? or what? Uh, the, the white short where I just painted the clone trooper white. Um, it was a combination of layering and, and a technique that I use on pretty much everything that I've explained in the past, but I can demo for you guys right now, um, which is my kind of two brush blending, not two brush blending technique. Um, here, let me see if I have like a flat base or something that I can do this on. Uh, <laughs> Brian Wallace said I should print out a mini at a urinal to paint Jason's story for the Discord challenge. <laughs> no photo record. <laughs> I was gonna not say, a good you reference. Have a reference pic. photo for There's that. There's no good reference photo. <laughs> I am not posting anything like that. Someone's gonna paint a little bit of caramel brown here really quick to give a little bit of a base coat. For me to work with for demoing this. Nori the Brit, thank you for the follow. But you'll see me do this on pretty much everything that I paint. Um, there's a lot of different techniques that I use when I'm uh, layering between just straight up layers like normal. You're not blending anything, you're just applying opaque layers one after another. I do that. Um, I will apply layers and then I will glaze the transitions between them. That's another thing that I do a lot. Um, I will wet blend things oftentimes. That's another way to do it. Um, and then I'll do like a bit of a, a hybrid between layering and wet blendery. Wet, wet blendery? Wet blendery. Wet blendering. Wet blendery. What is wet blendering? Say I. I don't know. That's a very odd thing. <clears throat> so the idea here while this is dry I'll give you a quick demo on the base is that I'm getting paint that is basically unthinned so it's pretty much right out of the bottle um, and I'm getting a decent amount of it on my brush and I'm going to throw it onto the base like this so I kind of just apply paint like that and what I do is I clean my brush, get it so that it's just barely damp, and then I will make side to side motions with my paintbrush on the model and move it slowly up into the paint and then draw it back down. And the idea is you get a really nice smooth gradient this color on top of something else so you're basically applying your layer on top of the previous one and then you are blending this layer to translucency over the previous layer which creates a really really nice smooth effect to transition you from one color to another <clears throat> without having to physically mix the two colors And it works especially well for darker colors. Uh, lighter colors can be a little bit more of a challenge just because the brighter colors will show more of the imperfections in that blend uh, than the darker colors will uh, because of how the transparent layer sits over the darker color versus a darker transparent layer sitting over a brighter color. Um, so it's... I tend to always do it on darker colors if I'm building up shadows for things. And then I'll do a little bit of it in like mid-tones or upper highlights. But when I get to my brighter highlights, I tend to do more textury highlights and things like that um, as a like a standard operating procedure for me. Um, I will do this as for highlights sometimes, depending on what it is and how big the surface is. 
Um, but if it's in a small area um, and it's kind of difficult to get to, I'll tend to just do standard highlighting or like texture highlights with like scratch marks and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> Sapo, that sounds like it under makes sense. Perfect. It's a it's a technique that takes a little bit of practice to get right. There's a there's a fluidity to the paint that you need to get comfortable with and a volume of paint that you need to apply on the model to get it to work right. Um, and then a dampness that works for you when you are moving the brush back and forth. Um, and it's kind of those three things together that kind of combine to get the perfect um, technique for this. So requires a bit of trial and error, but it is really, really great and very effective once you get good at it. And you use it for a lot of different things. That's starting to look real good. Shine it up. I love the reflection on the on the silver. It looks Give great. him shiny stuff. It looks great. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. You've got it nice and delicious like. Uh, to avoid using words like delicious around paint. Oh yeah, that's probably a great idea. It looks nice and delightful, like. I knew what you were trying to say. We probably yeah. should have. Uh, you were picking given, up on what I was putting down. We should have probably given a bit more thought to Caramel Brown. Yeah, that's not my fault. <laughs> I ain't taking ownership of that one. <clears throat> not on me, clipped. <laughs> Jordan said, get good scrub, and I have never related more. What do you mean? There are more complicated <laughs> techniques when you're learning to paint. No. Nope. And Thanks those things require trial and error. <laughs> Some of us are mature enough to not blame our paint eating on Jordan's flowery language. I do have flowery language. Thank you for <laughs> noticing. So here's a, a demo of me doing this with a dark umber. Hmm. I, did I tell you guys that when we took her, when Kyle and I took her to lunch, Yessie was telling us about how she got a, I think a, I think she said Venom figurine to paint. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Oh, I might have heard of this. So she showed me a picture yesterday. She hasn't gotten it yet, but she showed me a picture, and it's like this really cool, like whole scene kind of thing. Oh, that's awesome. I, it, it looks really neat. She's super excited. So I, I need like, to go talk to her. I said, yeah, I'm like. And you said she does canvas painting. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I was like, well, when it gets here, you bring it in and we'll help you get all set up and, you know, get started painting. Because she's like, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> like, we'll help you. You're in the right place. <laughs> don't eat the paint. That's what you clip. No. So the cool thing is once you start getting this sort of transition back and forth, you can take the original color and you can go back and then you can blend it back over. And you can go back and forth until you get the right layer or the right consistency to your blend so you get a really nice smooth blend between the two colors it's trying to reorganize her go bag that i might be in trouble you start with number one at the bottom right <laughs> start with number <laughs> one up. that's what i'm talking about <laughs> yep number one two three four all the way through 75 Except 64 goes in a weird spot. Ghost Hunter, really don't ever trust crash. anything you see on Facebook. 
I took my go bag somewhere. Has it evolved into a went bag? Yes. Yes. John is wearing one. Until of... you go again. <laughs> uh oh. John stole a, a gold uh -oh. chain from us. Who did he steal it from? I don't know. I think Shelby was saying something about never giving a chance to get, give one of hers away, so maybe it was that one. How dare you, John? What have you done to poor Shelby? She never deserved that. Is that only on Patreon? Why he feels confident bragging? It's only on his Patreon, too? Wow. I don't know. I, I, it's. Uh, Jess said it. He's wearing one of the chains in his vlog, bragging about stealing it. Seems about right. How dare he? Seems about right. Monument Hobbies has changed mini painting fashion forever. That's good advice. I saw my age listed in my Facebook profile, but I don't believe it. See? Book is full of lies. Oh. I just spent 30 minutes looking for a bit that snapped off a model. Found it after giving up. It was in the palette, stuck between the sponge and the edge. No matter what, everything you find is always in the last place you look. It's true. That is true. <laughs> Funny how that works. It always happens that way. That is true. Also saw that Monument Hobbies posted a picture of jail on Facebook. Well, that too. You sending people to jail now? It was your, your, it was your scale jail, your scale jail reference. reference. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Davey Gray, hello. I was in jail for that. <laughs> that is an accurate statement of fact. I have intentionally looked in more places after I found something just because. It's gotta be thorough. The question though, Game Delay, is have you ever found it? In any other place okay. as well. Well damn it, there it is again. The worst one is when you lose something, you buy a replacement, and, and then, then you, you find, find it. it. Yeah. yeah. That's the really bad one. Sent support a message. Don't know if it's been seen. When did you send it? You have sent it after 2 p.m. today. It has not been seen yet. Accurate. I found it in the third to last place, but kept looking in order to prove that saying wrong. <laughs> I've also watched a pot until it boiled. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. Hello, Avian. What's up, Avian? Uh-oh, Ghost Hunter said someone is painting the cutest spiders for the March challenge, Jordan. I hate all of you <laughs> for letting this happen. I'm with you, Chuck. Just put him in numeric order. Chuck's all about it. I was talking to him about it at uh, at Adepticon. <clears throat> yeah, Chuck was like, said, man, it's awesome. Jade, do I want brown gray to go with the browns or the grays? Chuck, I don't know. Just use the numbers. Exactly. I can't believe he betrayed me. <laughs> They're the pictures I saw before. They're not cute. Very spider, though. <laughs> Great. Thanks, folks. JP, it's okay. I just may be looking into the model game, so need the best paint in the world to paint my Pokemon cards. Oh, um, I, feel, I think Philip said he responded. Check your spam.
Kara is going to pick you then, but you fight her. Okay, jumping spiders are not too bad. They're like kind of kind of cutie, sort of. I would be more terrified of a jumping spider. They're they're kind of cute though. No. Jumping spiders are they're they're kind of adorable. All right, you you're insane. I am insane. Uh, like, you're literally afraid of spiders, totally but changed. the ones that are completely erratic and wind up in your clothes exactly. are the ones you don't mind. Yeah. They don't have the big long creepy legs. They just have short little stubby ones. They go boop, boop. Okay. I don't Jordan's know. insane. I don't know. <laughs> Completely insane. I mean, it's like me. I don't like bugs, but I don't mind bees. Bees don't bug me. I don't want them to sting me. But I can hang out and be chill. He doesn't want to mess with me. I don't want to mess with the bee. We're good. We're hanging out. Every other bug in the universe, though, except for apparently jumping spiders, gotta get, gotta go. They gotta go. They are, yeah, they do have a certain cuteness. Yep. No, I'm never going to Australia. Are you kidding me? Mm mm. Mm mm. <laughs> that place just wants to kill me. It's like all of the things that I'm terrified of are in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Chuck created a PDF that matches the grid of a go bag with white and black blocks to paint across so I can reference color and number. I approve of this type of organization. <laughs> Zappa said, I love lizards, but can't stand snakes. I don't like either one. Ghost Hunter, so much for inviting Jordan to Florida. <laughs> Been to Florida. Just keep me away from all the weirdness and the crocodiles. Oh, Ryan Wallace, that sounds terrible. That's true. Australians are terrified of brown bears and cougars. When was the last time you saw one of those? Yeah. Brown bears and cougars don't come to America. And we got a lot of those. No crocodiles. In. Cougar just tore up some kid and his brother. It really? Oh. Yeah. On a dirt road. It was in California. Anybody know? Jeez. Sad story. Two brothers out walking. Mountain lion. Came across their path. I was going to say, there's probably some kind of nature park or zoo or something that would have a crocodile. If you really want raised to their arms up over their heads, started yelling through their backpacks at it, and it mauled one of them, killed him, and, and maimed the other one really uh. bad. TGI Fridays on the highway is filled with cougars at happy hour. <laughs> My lord. Don't let them let don't let them sink their claws into you. Unless they are also <laughs> named uh uh Hey Chris. Oh Chris. What's the woman's name you're marrying? Christopher's getting married? Yeah, Chris is getting married. Her name is um Sugar oh yeah, Mama. Mama. Her Sugar. her last name is Mama, first name Sugar. Sugar Mama. Sugar Mama. <laughs> Avian says, "What? Why did? Why are you wowing me? What did I do?" Florida man is the scariest. See thing Christmas in there. Amen, brother. <laughs> First name Sugar, last name Mama. That guy had his 30 year old alligator pet taken away. I mean, they only lived to be like 900, so. Came to they saw coyotes crossing the street by a McDonald's in northern Tucson. Much scarier were the jav javelinas in the field by the YMCA. I mean, we have coyotes that wander through our neighborhood and foxes. But I did see wild javelinas in Tucson, and it was cool to see them. But yeah, they're they're not not friendly. The heck are javelinas? It's a really ugly pigs. Pig. Oh, wild like pigs. A boar. Wonderful. Very very nasty. In temperament, or... do not Thanks, yeah do not like people in their presence. Yeah, no. <laughs> so they'll run at you from afar. They 
they will mess you up. Wild coyotes are all over the place. And too, there was one in the alley, right? Recently, yeah. your front yard, yeah. somebody's front yard in our neighborhood. Parents had a herd 20 of twenty to thirty. To 30. Halloweenas walking through their neighborhood a few weeks ago. Oh my gosh! Seems they about live right. Out in like the desert. Seems about right. It does not take long for domestic pigs to become wild boars. <laughs> I see these videos about domestic pigs, right? And they're always like, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. One, one family oh, had a really like a pig big, brother. really big one, right? It was like two coras, but just as two tall. Two you know? And it had a igloo that it slept in out on the back porch. They came out one morning and go, hey, time to get up. And the thing's like, lifts its head up. It's like, time to eat. It just puts its head back down. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, I can't even today. Oh, they live next to a mountain, okay. Javelina are delish. Can you eat them? I mean, I guess so. Seems like they'd be a very gamey animal. Yeah, though. gamey bacon. You got bit by a boar a few months ago? Was that when you started dating? That, I was going to say, is, but, that um, a, is, that, <laughs> is that a euphemism? We've talked about cougars. <laughs> you really got to stay away from boar? the boars. <laughs> but um, we get packs of coyotes around here. It's the weirdest yipping that rises out of nowhere and echoes through the holler. The, uh, I've told my story on, on stream before. I bought my land in Colorado from a guy whose family had owned thousands of acres up in northern Colorado for, you know, since the, the land was recognized. And uh, he hunted coyotes on his land because there were, you can get money for the pelts for coyotes. A couple hundred bucks for a coyote pelt. And, uh, and coyote in Colorado are so rampant that during times of the year you can get a license and hunt coyote. Um, and so all up and down my, my street, my neighborhood, wasn't really a neighborhood, it's the middle of the country, but all up and down, he still owned hundreds and hundreds of acres either side of the road, everywhere where there wasn't a house was pretty much his. And I bought the North 40 of an 80 acre plot that he had a house on that he rented out to the guy that maintained all of his land. And so I would talk to him and he was driving around, but he would still hunt coyotes on all his open land. Well, the street that ran up our, our area was the only entrance into the national reserve that Colorado had sectioned off national wildlife preserve. Yeah. And, uh, they had bought it from him. Okay. And in the deal, he had said, uh, if you're going to buy it, you got to buy it all. And he had tried to sell them. I don't remember what it was. 20,000 acres or more. I don't remember what it was. Some huge, ridiculous amount of land. That's crazy. And they said they only wanted to afford a particular amount. So eventually they haggled and haggled and they closed. And so he still had a bunch of land right on the border of the national preserve, obviously. And uh, all the land that borders the parking lot for the National Preserve and everything is his. Is, and then there's yeah. just like a walk path that gets you to the National Preserve. And so he still hunts coyotes. Well, one day they were they have like the, you know, whatever, the, the social gathering of all of the, the people who donate to the National Preserve all the time. Probably have name, oh, you know, yeah. bricks with their name on the walkway. And they bring them up <laughs> in these <more> bus <laughs> loads. They bring them up in these bus loads. And it's generally these older women, right, who are like, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um uh, philanthropist families and stuff, these older women, they're all riding up in a bus, probably having a good time, drinking wine on the bus, going to go see the park they donate to make happen. And see as they're the driving by, there's what appears to be all these dogs and leg traps because he had put out the leg traps and, they're, and you know, he kills the coyotes and, and uh, skins them. And so as they were getting towards the National Preserve, there were like two or three of these traps popped with these dogs in them, they thought, you know, that were whining and screaming because they had their legs caught in the traps. <laughs> And at the same time, he's out there and he walks up to one of the traps and puts one of the coyotes down. And these women <laughs> just freak out. Like, it's right by the parking lot for the National Preserve as they're getting out of the bus. And they all start screaming and raising a hoopla or whatever. He sold the other, like, 12,000 acres the next day. Yeah. Like, those, those women got together and were told the story about it all. And yeah. they were like, all right, well, we're buying the rest now. Yeah. <laughs> So he said, funny. he goes, that's the best money I've ever made off a of coyote. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, the, he was like watching Yellowstone. He was like literally like talking to Kevin Costner from Yellowstone. That's this guy, so funny. Because he did not care. care. Yeah. He didn't care. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, those silly city fun. folk, they came out there not knowing what a coyote was. That the coyotes actually eat the dogs, yeah. by the way. Lots of people and, lose their pets. And cats and, yeah, all kinds of small animals. Those and red foxes we had a problem with up there. The red foxes would eat all the chickens. 
the fox in the chicken coop yeah. was a real deal up there. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the best sales pitch. He's like, if I'd have known that's all it took. <laughs> I'd have done this a long time I'd have been ago. trapping coyote next to the front door for a long time. Shyvendra, I don't think coyote hair would be good. It's They're very scruffy animals. I think that people would, would appreciate the, the frazzledness of the hair being that everyone likes such a nice point on their brushes. Javelinas get defensive when they smell dog. They'll charge when they feel threatened. They don't see so well, so they might start charging and get you, not your dog. Yeah, they're not. They're yeah, not, not the friendly. smartest animals. Not friendly. Not There's lots of stories of them just running right out in the front of cars. <laughs> just side eye in a car. Turns out you're not big enough to fight the car, buddy. Hey, somebody likes us. Thank you for that follow. Your buddy, Tenebrae. Thank you for the follow. That was one of my, my favorite stories that guy told. I don't even remember the guy's name anymore. He'd come running up to my building on a horse. That's hilarious. All cowboyed out with coyotes strapped across the back of the horse that he'd killed. I was always like, you know, it's odd to me that you own basically hundreds of thousands of acres of Colorado land. Every time he sells anything other than the 40 acres to me, which was not much, you know, but every time he sells land, it's in huge chunks and makes millions of dollars. And he's out killing coyotes for like 90 to to $100 a pelt. Hobby. Yeah, well, it's just... He's like, I'm not going to let $100 get away from me. <laughs> I was like, okay. Great attitude. That's why he's got money. He drove an old beat-up Subaru station wagon. An old Outback. Like, 22-year-old Outback. Yeah. You know? Had a, it was a four-wheel drive Outback. And he'd come across the road. He wouldn't, he'd drive off-road with it. And he'd just roll up. Or he'd be on his horse. With a gun across his back. He was just the same guy he was as a kid. He didn't care. His parents died and left him all millions of acres or whatever it was. And he's like, I sell it when I can. Sounds like a really interesting guy. Well, they got a lot less stress than the rest of us. Accurate. <laughs> I think his wife was brutish, more brutish than he was. She was a, a skinny little thing. But she manhandled a horse and killed coyotes, too. And uh, she was the, the other woman in, I mean, in the neighborhood that I had seen literally just bend down, pick up a rattlesnake by the back of its head and, like, wing it 20 yards off. You know, be like, get out of here. <laughs> That's crazy. They sell them, Green Mountain. They sell them. And that's the thing is like Coyote Pelt was like, I think he told me like 90 to 100 bucks. It was under $100 or right around 100 bucks. It wasn't like you made a bunch off of Coyote Pelts. And I was like, you get a dozen of them, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, you just made 1,200 bucks in a week of hunting coyote and setting traps and doing that thing. Yeah, Shai Venger, he's he sold it before he moved here. Yeah, I sold it. I built a, a big, like, 3,000-square-foot building on it with two big semi-doors, and I had my, my uh, motorhome in one side that I lived in and my metal shop on the other side, and I just built motorcycles out of there, out in the middle of nowhere. Eight miles south of Wyoming. It was called Wellington, Colorado, but it wasn't Wellington. That was just the nearest town that had a post office. This is sounding like your uncle's neighbors in Australia. <laughs> You have some super sweet Chihuahua hair brushes for real cheap. If anybody's interested, do we have to make them? Like, are they still alive? Is that what I'm reading into this, Corvus? No, they shed enough. <laughs> oh, you gathered. You, you just gathered oh, up the the, it's in a bag. Yeah, <laughs> it's in a. <laughs> it's in a bag like, that looks uh, a strangely like our vacuum it, bag. <laughs> tape it to the end of your toothbrush, and there you go, Chihuahua brush. But yeah, I never understood the whole coyote pelt thing with him. He was an interesting guy. Whenever he, he didn't live out there anymore, he had lived in the house that shared the 80 acres that I bought 40 of. And when he bought a house in Wyoming and lived in Wyoming, um, and, and the, you know, the field hand that worked for him lived in the house by me, and it was a, a double wide, basically, that house was. And he would come out, and he had on that land still had a trailer 
and he and his family stayed in that trailer. Crazy. Old beat up trailer. I wouldn't have stayed in that damn trailer. Well, Tomato said, I'm going to have wad hair brushes at Adepticon next year. Very luxurious and rare. Highly sought after. <laughs> Somehow, I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, I, I believe you that maybe you'll have them, but the whole sought after <laughs> part, I don't. Bye quickly. They'll be gone by Saturday. <laughs> That's true. Nobody I know has a set. <laughs> We'll have a signature brush series from Chris's hair. Chris's hair is like four feet long. So these are called mops. It's always surprising. It, it, it is always surprising. Always surprising. Okay, so Chris... I have seen it, but I am always like... Oh. It's amazing. Christopher is the most... Yeah, it really is. He keeps it in like this really tight like man bun, bun under a hat yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. You'd never know he had long... I didn't know from the time I met him until the first time he came walking through here and did the... He whipped out his saxophone and did the shake of his curly <laughs> hair. And I was like, whipped out his saxophone. <laughs> I really want Chris to walk around the office with a saxophone now. We're going to get him a toy <laughs> saxophone. <laughs> if you found him, you would keep looking delay. Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the longest hair ever. Not really, but it's super long. Oh, Kenny was a, an oboe, though, wasn't he? Or was he a saxophone? Or uh, a clarinet? I think both. All of the above? Maybe all of them. Whipped out a saxophone did sound NSFW. <laughs> now you need Chris to sing five man electrical band signs. <laughs> what? All the long-haired, freaky people need not apply. <coughs> just walks around like the oiled-up sax guy from Lost Boys. <laughs> Man, that's weird. I just saw a picture of that guy recently. I don't know why. For some reason, I think on the Monument Facebook feed, if you scroll through the feed, because Monument really doesn't follow enough people, you eventually get into horror movie groups what? that post. It just starts throwing random stuff up. And since a lot oh, of the okay. pictures we look at are of like monster miniatures and oh, stuff, we yeah, get like yeah. sci-fi and horror group thing. It's probably just people that follow us, the groups they're in. Oh, Kenny G's, he plays different types of saxophones. So tenor, soprano, alto, and tenor sax. And the, the higher ones are the, the ones that look a little bit more like a clarinet. That Lost Boy dude still tours? He's like the super muscular guy, right? Remember the saxophone guy in Lost Boys. Lost Boys, what a movie. So good. Have you seen it, Jordan? The Lost Boys? I'm guessing that's no, but it's a good movie. It's not the, it's not your typical eighties movie. I think you you would really like it. I'm not saying I wouldn't like it. No, I, just I know, seen but it. I just I don't I don't know why I thought that it was <laughs> I don't. Lost Boys had like the the dad vampire who had turned the local thugs into vampires too, right? Yes. And and it was like uh uh Oh jeez. I had, had his name just a second ago. Keeper Sutherland was Kiefer the leader Sutherland of the was, goons. Was the vampire. He was a, the vampire. He was not the one that He was the leader of the thugs yes. that had been turned into vampires. Yes, but he was not the... I can see the old guy. Yeah. Who wasn't really old at the time, but no. I can see his face yeah. as a vampire. Anybody remember Fright Night? Fright Night, where I think it was the kids, the young kids, and the neighbor was a vampire, and they had to—they were trying to convince the uh, their parents in the neighborhood that he was. It was another like rated R horror flick with crazy, gruesome stuff that had children in it. Same thing with uh, with uh, what's it? Yeah, it was Edward Edward Herman, I think. Was the... Yeah, there was Fright Night the and then guy. the one Jen's talking about. Both Corys were in The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys, yeah. Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. Haim. And Edward Herman was the older guy. With the lady from Married with Children? 
Who? She was in one of those? The lady really? for Married with Children was not in The Lost Boys. You're thinking Sons of Anarchy. The, the lady for Married of Children was in Sons of Anarchy. Oh, she was in Fright Night? Really? Okay. I don't remember her in Fright Night. Chivenger movie so great they had to make an awful remake. Of which one? Well, it's like, you're damn right I remember Fright Night. <laughs> I'm not a big horror movie fan, so I don't get really amped up about them, but I remember that one being pretty good. Oh, not not uh, oh. Bundy, Bundy's friend, when you oh, say woman neighbor? from... Okay, the other one that doesn't matter. The next door neighbor. The Yeah, the next door neighbor. I don't remember. Katie Seagal is... Katie Seagal was Bundy. was Bundy. Peg Bundy. Peg Bundy. The, the gate was the love interest in Fright Night. Okay. What was the gate? That sounds familiar. Jason Patrick. Oh, here's the sax guy. <laughs> Amanda Bierce is Marcy. Marcy was the neighbor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Marcy. Peg must be short for something. Peggy. Peggy Bundy. Have I seen House? The one where the graphic is the is the floating hand ringing the doorbell? Is that House? If so, yes. But we're talking about, like, these were in my, like, 12-year-old, 13-year-old, right? There were two Lost Boys. These would have been, been, like, 80, 81, 82, 83. Peg is, is short for maybe Margaret. Some people named Margaret go by Peg. My aunt went by Peg, but her name was Darlene. <laughs> so that, they're not connected. So Peg is short for Darlene. It's take not, that out. Though. Take that and cash it at the bank. It was because um, my grandpa, or like I don't know, it was my I don't think it was my grandpa. I think it was my un my mom's uncle. Um, Peg is short for Peg Refer. Had a Peg <laughs> Short for peg leg. You strellos, I'm too young for this 80s stuff. No, you're not. You can go rent it, like, right now. You probably don't even have to rent it. You can just go watch it. <laughs> it's got to be public domain by now. Cabin in the Woods. Nicknames are weird. No, but she, she went by Peg because it was, like, my uncle, her uncle's, um, like, ex-girlfriend or something. And he loved the name. Oh. And he couldn't name his own daughter Peg because, obviously, that, would be that wouldn't go over well. So he just called her little Peggy, and that it stuck. Oh, Peg Bundy was Margaret? Is there, like, a Wikipedia about that? Uh-oh. Yeah, Edward Herman was the head vampire, the older guy. Very excited to see what everybody paints on stream tomorrow. It'll be fun to, to hear about. Now that I'm old, I relate to Grandpa from The Lost Boys. <laughs> you ain't got no time. We might still be in the car when the, when the stream happens. Yeah, we depending on when we leave. We'll still be in the car when the stream is happening. Unless we leave super early. <clears throat> Remember the old guy in the howling? When you say grandpa and Lost Boys. I remember the old grandpa type character in the howling. And they were all like he was like tired of life, long in the tooth, werewolf. 
The Howling was one of the scariest scenes I had ever seen when the main bad dude, the psychotic guy, turns into a wolf. And it was at the time, like, ferocious special effects of how he turned into a wolf. You watch it now and it's not... It, it stands up, but it's, it's still pretty bad. But at the time, I was like, ah! Chai Vendra, that's actually a really good question. Did anyone get out of the booth long enough at Adepticon to see anything new or interesting? It's tough to get out of the booth, to be honest. Did you have to go walk around and do any shopping? No. Uh, I did I a didn't. little bit I mean, shopping. I walked around a little bit for meetings, but no. Some, all, everybody, I mean, all the, the guys went and took laps, but I don't know if anybody saw anything interesting. I bought some dice. I got some really cool dice for my old world army. Other than that, eh. Dave got more gamers grass. Yeah. The line the first day was nuts. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody got any. The register went down? Uh, what? I don't know about that. I don't remember that happening. It didn't go down, it just knocked, it booted them out and they had to re-log in. Oh, was that when they were, yeah, when Gabe was calling me and stuff. Oh yeah, that Gabe was got first some cool thing. Stuff. That was like, like, right when the booth was opening, though I think. Yeah, it was fixed quick. Yeah. Yeah, Savia and I did. Uh, someone said, "What was your favorite meal from Adepticon?" It was Drella would like to know. Um, good question. What was my favorite meal? I go back and remember what we ate. <sighs> Breakfasts were all kind of the same. We never really had lunch. So dinners. Um, first dinner was pretty good. Clearly nothing compared to the empanadas from Gen Con. No, oh, not, no. Even, not even remotely close. No. No, not even close. The Deptic Con doesn't really have that kind of punch. Yeah, the restaurants close by. We had good meals, but oh, I, you know, all the meals were great meal. for the company we kept, but none of them were super awesome. For our steak club, we went to uh, Texas de Brazil, Brazilian <sighs> steakhouse. That's the yeah. Bring me the meats. Yeah, yeah. We went there the last time I went to. The well, Dominican. the unfortunate part for me there is like I was actually feeling not very good. Yeah, like, I was having some stomach upset issues that night. He had to poop. I've got two kinds of wet in oh. my pants. Who that? Spark minis. Spark minis. Thank you for the raid. What is going on? Welcome, raiders. Hey, somebody likes us. Hey. Thank you for that. Welcome, everyone. Hope you had a great stream. Hello. Negative. I was just, I was telling everyone um, about how I remember the lunches at Adepticon actually being decent. In the like the lunches at the, yeah, the the restaurants good the uh, not the restaurants the downstairs um, just like the lines yeah you the know food. how at, at most cons they'll have like eat lamp food oh sure right yeah, they're so when you go fine. to that but Adepticon in the past always did like a different theme every day so there was like a mm. taco day and a um, baked potato day and that I don't really remember good. but we we didn't really eat any of that food yeah I know it's what I that everyone yeah. didn't have time for lunch. Oddly enough, people I was with were hyping up Kumas, saw how packed it was out in the burbs, and went to the OG Kumas for a late dinner. That's the place that Jason won't go. Any place I walk in and the first sign you see is all the things you're not allowed to do there does not get my business. It's a very negative way to attract customers. Yeah, it's a little weird. Even when the first thing says no bad attitudes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. No mistreating your server. That's awful. Oh, but they can mistreat you, right? I'm like, Is you know what? You could have just as easily written, have a great time. Yeah. Tip your servers. Be nice. Be nice. Right? I get that that's probably what they're trying to do, but they're trying to be punk rock. It's like the whole fake punk rock vibe of Kuma's irks me. Spark Minis had a great stream, worked on prepping mini Raja and finished priming and dry brushing a gobble I built at Adepticon. Very awesome. Cool. Hey, somebody likes us. It's great to see you at Adepticon. Ms. Raven B, thank you for the follow. 
Chuck said, so for us, on the way home, we stopped at a restaurant my grandparents used to take my sister and I to when we were kids. It was great. I hadn't been there in redacted years. <laughs> ha! I love it. I've been to a Dick's Last Resort, not in Tennessee, but in um, San Antonio. And, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> funny because I was not the subject of any of the uh, insults. Dicks can be really fun. Cup. Cup. What are you doing with the cup now? Please wash. Oh, it may only be it may only be the one that's right by the mall. You know, I never know. That's way too much glaze wash menu. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pour some of that back in. I don't need to waste that much. I ain't trying to make that much wash. What uh, what wash are you making? Just some verdigris. Nice. What are you using for the verdigris color? I will be using green oxide. That's the because one. that's what it's for. <laughs> That sounds like it would be fun, adventure <laughs> as a young person to work there. Oh, well, being able to mistreat your customers <laughs> and a fun kind of being encouraged to mistreat your customers. That's wild to me. <laughs> Go ahead and put four, maybe, maybe, yeah, four is fine. What are those plastic, cup, plastic cups called? Like dosage. They're just graduated measuring cups. Like measuring, do, like medicine like cups. Like dosage, dosage cups, yeah. You can get them on Amazon for very, very, very yeah, cheap. Or you just go steal them off the tops of NyQuil. Yeah. In the... <laughs> just go get a really bad cold. Go buy a bunch of NyQuil. Same thing. Watch well, tomatoes said, all right, I'm off to eat Taco Bell and play board games. Have a great night. Have fun, Wad. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Don't eat eat Taco much. Bell and play board games. <laughs> Sounds good and bad at the same time. Yeah, be careful. Don't eat too much Taco Bell. Hashtag goals. That's a poop joke. Yep. A little bit more opaque than we did with the red. <laughs> so I used less glaze wash, put in more paint. Hashtag poop goals. And this one, because I want it to act more like a wash and run around into cracks, we just did the glaze wash medium, the paint, and now... Um, water. Water will continue to dilute. So anytime you plan to add water to make a wash and you're testing opacity, make sure it's more opaque before adding the water than you want because it will knock it down. Estrella, that's between you and like your local Walgreens because they probably won't let you buy all of it. That kind of intensity like that. I think that's good. I'm just going to kind of poke it along. Is there water available on the store? No. If there's a lake near your house, maybe that will do. Basically like pen washing, just touching the brush into the recesses in between the rib cage booms. Tim, is this the is this the one that does not like your grill? We can't sell Arizona water because we only sell non-toxic things. <laughs> we don't have a hazardous products license. <laughs> that was <laughs> when you told us about that, Tim. 
That was like one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> she loves that for me, yes. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if you were here. Tim was telling us about the new girl, a new girl that he had met that does not really care for his grill. And uh, he said that when he told her about it, she said, oh, I love that for you. <laughs> That's the best. That's like a Jen, very Jen answer. <laughs> Would totally be something I would say. Jen would be like, "That's nice, dear. I, I love that, that for you." For you. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> she very obviously did not care for the grill. <laughs> Brian Wallace said, "I get weird looks at Walgreens when I have to restock my isopropyl alcohol for painting and resin printing. He always wants to know why I'm buying 15 bottles at a time and a roll of duct tape." And a roll of duct tape. <laughs> you always got to throw it. Whether you need it or not, I feel like you got to pick up the roll of duct tape. <laughs> she's Russian, but the games are from the LGS. So she's not from the LGS. You, you really should. Just, just one roll of duct tape. That'll be enough. zip ties you put the 15 bottles of alcohol on the counter and say do you guys not sell zip ties mini ruckus back home in the desert good to see you we Were stopped you by the booth Hmm? Did you guys see Mini Ruckus at Adepticon? Yeah, he stopped by the booth. Oh. I yep. seen him in a long time. Yep. Uh, Since he did. visited the office, I don't think. Yeah, he's local. Got to meet yeah. him. Talking to him about how cool it is to have somebody local in the community. How was your trip back home? Hope it was uneventful. Yeah. Did you drive? If so, we heard you may have hit a blizzard. You did not meet her at the LCS. Yes, okay. Jason might have had one the the most crazy traveling backstory. Not that it happened directly to you, but that thing that happened in uh, Baltimore. Yeah, I went and looked. It was not the bridge I traveled over. No, but it, but it was in the general vicinity where you were. Oh, yeah, yeah. When Ooh. we caught up yesterday, I was like, wow, you left Baltimore just in time. I know. <laughs> Holy cow. That was pretty crazy. Crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, for those of you who did not hear, a uh, was a barge of some kind, tugboat? Yeah, hit the key bridge. Yeah, hit the key bridge and collapsed it. I don't know how anyone could not have heard. It's a major deal. I wouldn't have heard about it if somebody hadn't told me. Pay attention. No? Like Not like unless there's something that's the really... Huh? Like, like if you were to open... You don't see any news ever on... I see miniatures. Computer. And I see... On YouTube, you don't see any news or anything? Nope. Wow. I have curated... You have got a good algorithm. I have curated <laughs> my algorithm to avoid it. Because I don't Refined. look... I don't look for news at all. Wow. If, if it is big enough that I need to know about it, somebody will tell me. It's a complete freaking disaster it's for trucking and, in that area. Yeah, and for me, what, what, what's going to happen if I turn on the news? I'm going to hear about something that is not great and it's going to make me sad. So for me to keep my sunny disposition, <laughs> I avoid looking at negative things. <laughs> it's like that thing where it's like, 
you know, when you go to the doctor and it's like, doctor, my arm hurts when I do this. And they're just like, don't stop do doing that. Don't do that. Right? It's like, well, <laughs> watching the news makes me sad. <laughs> well, stop Jordan doing like that. all the time. That's why Jordan's so happy. <laughs> makes a lot so of sense, doesn't know, it? So you haven't heard about life on Mars then? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I haven't. Tell me more. This sounds exciting. There's a big censored post that lost power and took the bridge out. I keep adjacent enough to the news that I can hear about things that are important for me to know about, but I avoid it enough so that I don't have to hear about it. What he's saying is he gets all his news from stream. So there you go, chat. (laughs) We landed on the moon. You know, sometimes it's better than getting it from the news. (laughs) Probably not a lie. (laughs) Not like I'm completely unplugged, folks. I just have a really enjoyable detachment from from the news when I need to have it. What's up, Mo? Hello. I have, I think, three different news, no, four different news sources that send me push notifications all day long. (laughs) So I always know what's going on. Nope. Trying to think of news things to tell Jordan. Are there any realizing I've been doing the same thing he has? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey Jen, here's here's a really here's a really interesting question for you. Are there any news things that are important for me to know about that aren't sad? Um probably. That would like fundamentally change my day to day. I will let you know okay. if anything comes up. Great. Because like I said. I get all the notifications. <laughs> yeah. Jen knows when anything happens. I know what's happening right now. It's more about the ship. Yep. Huge deal. This is a big deal. Here's one for you. I would not want to own that shipping company. Bloody stabbing spree. That makes you want to read more. Yeah. Didn't, didn't I say something about not sad? <laughs> I mean, that's exciting. Whoa. Jen, people are dead. People done being stabbed to death. That. There is that. Yes. Mo said I met an, a guy that was another version of me today, but he looks like Jason. Thanks. I don't know what that means. There's another version of me that's floating around somewhere in Idaho. Yeah, we saw his picture. Yeah. yeah. It's very weird. Baby J, the, the stabbing story is a Warhammer tournament recap. It's okay. Oh, okay, we're good. All right. Sounds good. Crisis averted. Yeah, part of it is, like, my my grandmother and my dad watch the news all the time, and they get so wound up about stuff. Yeah. And it's just like, why are you getting so wound up, wound up about all this stuff? Like, 80% of this just is not relevant to your life. It's okay to get wound up about stuff that, like, affects you seriously. But at the end of the day, like, you gotta, like, there's, there's only so much of that you can control. So. And it is good to, to be knowledgeable about what's going on, but. Uh, blindly watching sad stuff all day just sounds. You're not gonna dig yourself out of this one, so. Hey, hey, it's, it's true. <laughs> hey, look, it is what it is. You're not gonna dig yourself out of this one. That's uh, like, even it doesn't specify. That's like saying you can tuck, stop, tuck, and roll under a desk to avoid nuclear bombs. <laughs> Can't do that? Mm. Oh, I heard I could hide in a refrigerator. Does that, that work? That too, yeah. That'll, we'll call us, let us know. <laughs> yeah, we'll let us know. I need these Baby J life hacks. <laughs> I'm not sure you always want these Baby J life hacks, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you, Jade. So I do, I do keep up on the news, but then I also follow several 
uh, Instagram accounts that are uplifting. One of them is called Tanks Good News. Tanks Good News? Uh-huh. Yeah, the like the the news news networks n- never hear anything good. The, the, the last five minutes usually. So they're just like, oh hey, yeah. Here's- like, hey, sorry for bringing you down. <laughs> yeah. Look what somebody did. That was minutes nice. Is bad stuff. Yeah. Here's the last five here's minutes. The- we're gonna give yeah. you a nice happy story. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna leave you with a little bit of an upper before you <laughs> you go back to your day. Oh gosh. All right, there we go. Vertigree on copper mace. One orange brain cell. Avian said, "Go go on Reddit. Go to cats or one orange brain cell." But what would we see in one orange? I get the cats one. I can assume that that's going to be cute cats. But what is one orange brain cell? It's about orange cats. Okay. It's about orange cats, Jen. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's one orange brain cell doesn't give me any hint that it would be. About oh, cats. no. I sorry. I read those together. <laughs> cats or one orange brain cell. There you go. Down and dirty, simple, vertigreed copper. Great. Just in time to be about done. It's 3.54. Look at that. Look at that timing, Jason. I thought it was odd when the guys in Oppenheimer weren't using desks when the bomb went off. Right? No, they were standing outside. (laughs) That was prior to them realizing you needed desks, by the way. That's why all those people died from radiation poisoning later. (laughs) Chuck, I wouldn't say I'm an addict, but I, I, I am interested. In what? News. Oh. It is really interesting how, like, little my feed gives me news. Desks absorb all the gamma. Problem is they grow and turn green after <laughs> desks turn into nightmares. You know, they get you real angry, and then you turn into a big, scary re- green monster. Here's some radiation for you, and some for you, and some for you. <laughs> At least it was the H-bomb. It didn't have the same half-life as the A-bomb. If you don't follow news, how do you know who not to vote for? Can we get none of the above written in? (laughs) What movie was it that had none of the above? Vote none of the above. Wasn't it um, a Woody Pryor? I can't remember. Wait, scroll back down. Was there something about people sitting on a toilet as a stream? Well, so here's the thing. I clicked on your following tab, and normally it might just be like these. Uh, but I always try scrolling, and then I scrolled, and I was Oop. like, what? This, Whoa. Is, this is recommended, recommended channels. At, because uh. I thought that these were still your follow, and I'm like, we need to have chat. About this stream following. is called Toilet Water POV. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, that is this wow. is what Twitch has become. Toilet Water the tags POV. Are Canada and Canadian. Maybe they have different rules there. That is insane. It says what terms of service happening? change. What is this one? Uh, this is, I, I don't even. Uh, there we go, everyone. What I'm glad Jen saw Twitch. it because now she can believe me when I say it's all going to hell in a handbasket. It sure is. <laughs> Canada does have some explaining to do. All these people are from Canada, by the way. RateMyPoo.com. No, clicking that. Don't no, click that. Not clicking that. Don't click that. <laughs> Don't click that, anyone. Oh my gosh, we had a guy. Green a, Mountain, stop it. A local guy. Don't click these links. Um, Dick, <laughs> the local guy in the last election, his name was Dixon Butts. Wait, really? Dixon. Dixon. First name Dixon? Dixon. Last name Butts. Last name Butts. And he was truly on the ballot for like city council or something like that. He had the best signs. Well, when you put dot com next yeah. to something, Mo, it's That's what happens, make it Mo. A link. <laughs> Welcome to the twenty first century. 
<laughs> I did not think it was going to make a... That's why people <laughs> write it out D-O-T. You write it out D-O-T com. It's a legit website where I don't want to care. I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't I don't matter. care. I, I, don't, <laughs> like, I don't judge you for your weird so kinks, oh. but that is not anywhere in the realm of interesting for me. <laughs> yeah, dicks and butts all on this all the This is a wild stream, folks. It. This is a wild stream. <laughs> dicks and butts 2024. It's like the, the cider. The dick and cider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 oh my gosh, uh, the best commercial ever. Somebody made like a, you know, it's a tongue in cheek uh, meme commercial, but it's all about people being interviewed about the Dickens cider. <laughs> and being like, oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, Fort Wayne, Indiana, there was a mayor named Harry Balls, pronounced the way the good Lord intended. <laughs> you know, I always wonder how those people survive their childhood. I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea. Because my last name is Craze, and I barely survived my childhood. It wasn't even that off the hook. There goes that YouTube monetization. It's a good thing we don't use that, but yes. <laughs> These are just funny videos. It shows those. That's a side of humanity having fun and not taking it seriously that I enjoy. Yeah. Some of it may be over the top. But that would have been, like, the whole cider skit would have been a Saturday Night Live skit if it isn't. I don't think it is. But it would have been a Saturday Night Live skit, you know, a few decades ago. Now it wouldn't exist. Maybe it would. They must have leaned into it or was able to be oblivious. You knew a kid growing up named Justin Sane? That's pretty funny. You know, it makes me wonder, like, how many of those were families that thought that out? You know, like with an, a last name like Sane, it has to be just Justin. You have to. Like, like mom and dad got together. That's like, got to be on That's purpose. it. That's it. Yes. You don't make that mistake, right? The only saving grace potentially here. Is was that... it Keith Schwetty or something like that? Something Schwetty. I remember what the guy's name was. Schwetty. But it was uh, Alec Baldwin, right? Baldwin was playing somebody, Mr. Schwetty and his delicious balls. And it's those two women from Saturday Night Live that drive me insane because on that skit, they just, they do the, I just, I got all excited when I knew you were bringing your sweaty balls. What the heck? He became his name, Santa Cruz Mountain Crazy Meth Head. Oh, lived up to it. He did not survive his childhood. Your brother-in-law, his real name is Stanislaw. As last name? What's first name? I've known people with the last name Stanislaw. I feel like you felt such a responsibility of naming your kids. You spent days making sure there wasn't rhyming teases that could be made. See, now I feel like that's the right way to do it. If you're not just trying to create instability in your child's men mental state. <laughs> you had an athlete hall of fame at your high school and you had a track runner from the fifties or sixties with the name Rick Slaughter. That's a heck of a name, by the way, Rick Slaughter. That is a heck of a name. Just in case in the grade below you. That's good, too. That's that's some parents with a good sense of humor. Yeah, I feel like with a last name like my dad with Craze, the family name Craze, that you got to be careful. But nothing you do saves your kids. Right? It looks good on a jersey. Like on my hockey jersey. It always looked good hanging up. But nobody, nobody lets you off the hook. Hey Jason, don't forget to invite just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Let's invite just in case. You already said that. I don't understand you, Jordan. Oh, his real, his first name is Stanislaw? Craze, just like you think. Yeah, C R A Z E, Corvus. Nobody wants to spell it that way, though. Everybody tends to spell it with a K, or like you did, like C R A Y S E. Nobody wants to be. Oh, I can't be crazy. So whenever I tell somebody with, because you know, on the phone they'll be like, you know, uh, can you repeat your last name? I like Craze, C R A Z E, like crazy. 
and then I'll get places to be C R A Z Y. Well, you told me he's like yeah. crazy. I'm like, uh, okay, whatever. I have the same thing <laughs> when I when I have to tell people lamb, it's like lamb, like the animal, like to the slaughter. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. the animal. <laughs> Polish, yeah, Stanislaw. Whose name was Wade Ewan? Am I missing something? Probably. That one goes over my head. That Lots of amazing goes. client names I can never share, but I really did go to high school with a Christopher P. Bacon. Crispy Bacon. <laughs> Yours is Holly. So you get Buddy. You get called Buddy all the time. Buddy Holly. I say Fisher and wait for them to start typing before I say it with a C. And I watch the confusion wash over them. It's the best. Well, I mean, you're misleading them, right? Fisher with a C? Because that, the brain immediately goes to the first letter. It's not, you know, Corvus is not a terrible name. You got, I got the good old lamb chops when I was a kid. Which was like a terrible attempt to make a bad pun about my name. But I have like one of the least weird middle names ever. Most people have like middle names that you can make fun of. Mine is like totally weirdly normal. Well, didn't so, yeah, somebody told us to get a pig and name it Chris P. Bacon. Kids can be merciless. So that's why I say I don't know how some of these people survive their childhood. Yeah. They are savage. Who are we raiding into? Oh, I mean, I just got back. Jeez. Wow. Are you guys uh, his you middle name is Baby. Yeah. Jordan Baby Lamb. It's spelled B-E-B-E. Bibby. <laughs> Bibby. Bebe. No, oh, it's, it's Dane. D-A-N-E. Jordan Dane Lamb. Which is not bad. Sorry, Dane, Dane Lamb is nice. You should just go by Dane. Dane. I'm going to call you Dane now. What's wrong with Jordan? Nothing wrong with Jordan. He's Baby Dane. Baby Dane. Big Baby Dane. <laughs> Sounds like a good old rock and roll tune. Like 70s rock song. Good old Baby Dane. Baby's kids. <laughs> You think AC is using the new paints on a super bright skink? Then there we go. Well, there it is. Easy peasy. He's got them all. He's he was got in the booth. Huge... He's got all the paints. Let's raid him. I like your it. Your last name is Lafond. Mini... You see your mini ruckus Lafond? Lafonda. 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 Well, and you have the pomp and the, and the creepers and everything, dude. I mean, Lafonda is that's from pretty, Napoleon Dynamite. Pretty funny. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. We've had a blast. Uh, Jordan and I, this is it for us this week. Yeah. We are out tomorrow. We leave for WonderCon. So if you're amongst the bajillions of people who live in Southern California, there's a neat event thrown by Comic-Con International, the San Diego Comic-Con people, called WonderCon. It starts on Friday. It's in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center. Jordan and I will be there from 10 to midnight every day, it feels like. That's going to be a long one. Uh, we will be doing the uh, paint and take area uh, with the uh, Comic-Con staff, and then Jordan will be teaching classes that are free, so you can come for a basic and intermediate class. We do basic, intermediate, basic, two nights in a row, three classes that Jordan will be teaching. I'll be there hanging out, um, so feel free to stop on in. I have no idea how to get tickets. I'm not that guy, but I'm sure you can get tickets to go to wondercon.com. And uh, we'd love to see you out there. If you are in the area, be super cool. Come hang out with us. Spitfire Miniatures, we stream at the same time every day. Two to four. Not our fault. Five days a week. For those of you that are new here, please hit that follow button. We'd love to see you back. We stream two to four, five days a week. That is Mountain Standard Time. Look on your browser. Type in, what time is it in Arizona? If it says 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., get in here. Preferably sooner than 4.07. <laughs> yeah, 4.07 <laughs> is not, not the best time to be hopping in. So thanks for hanging. Do tune in tomorrow, though. We're going to have a great job with the queen. Uh, the, the crew is all here. Jen will be doing the producing. I don't know who's changing. Phil and Matt? That is correct. I think Phil and Matt tomorrow. So you guys are going to have a lot of fun. Take it easy on them. Leave them in one piece. We need them to do good work. Matt said he would bring his horse. We will be back. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's bringing his horse. So uh, Jordan and I will be back next Tuesday. So uh, Thursday, Friday, and Monday, you'll be greeted with the wonderful family of other people. I'm still here. I have more rules than he Dad's does. Dad's going to be so. gone. No rules. Yeah, I have way fewer rules than mom does. So take it easy, guys. Stick around for the raid. Uh, for those of you over on YouTube, you might want to come jump over to twitch.com 
uh, or twitch.tv, not twitch.com anymore, twitch.tv, uh, and uh, join in for some more hobby goodness as we raid, I think, AC Miniatures. Showing the new uh, sets, maybe for some Rogue Hobbies brightness. So have a wonderful evening. Look forward to seeing you later, guys. We're out of here. Bye. Bye.